GGEA, Karna, and Winner's Side up against C2. C2 just beat Geo to get here. Karna uh, beating Cam in the DDD. C2 is the uh, number two seed tonight behind Karna. Okay. Geo was number three late, and Cam was number four. Oh, okay. So. That was your uh, that was your projected winner semis. I'm surprised Lumo wasn't able to do anything about that. I guess it's totally stuck in stun, so not going to be able to get anything going. Karna's actually done this before, and I've been impressed by his uh, proficiency in killing Lumas. He's uh, he's very good at locking that down. And we saw it against Samsora, uh -huh. especially. There we go. You know, against Samsora, I feel like he went chic, right? Uh, he went he went chic mostly except there was I think one game where he did play cloud against right. He played a lot of sets against Samsora. That's true I think like three total tonight though It looks like Karna's going all secondaries going mostly cloud and Diddy who I've never seen from him before But it looks solid. It did look solid. It looked real solid right now His ledge trapping is looking really solid and that's not unusual. No, that that's is, classic Karna play That is definitely a, a Karna thing. I mean he plays chic. He's got to know how to do it, but uh, right. Karna especially is just so dangerous with that. Here we go. Just get some damage. Knock Rosalina's Luma away. Catching Luma on, or catching Rosa on the getup with that forward tilt. Going to take the first stock. And showing off just how quickly he can flick his control stick back and forth. Oh, yeah. He's okay. real good. So tried to throw out that up tilt to catch Luma, but uh, Luma was actually too high to connect. So C2 still got Luma on the board. It's really terrifying. For Karna to keep going for all these empty jumps and like landing up airs, landing back airs around C2 because C2 could just intercept with jabs or preemptive up airs to try to catch him if he's calling out these jumps. Uh, I feel like we saw a lot of that from Samsora. Oof. Yeah. I think the big thing we need to see from C2 as well, which Samsora also did, is uh, when Karna's just going to be going for that Luma, C2 needs to be ready to punish him for it. All these empty jumps that Cloud gets against Rosalina and Luma happen because Rosalina and Luma is respecting the Cloud a lot, giving him just so sometimes too much. You have to at least assert that, hey, you can't get away with this for forever. And it's part of the big reason that C2 hasn't seen uh, Luma in about, uh, like, since Christmas. And Normally, Cloud's landing aerials are actually very impressive, uh, so it's understandable that you wouldn't want to try to challenge them too much. But one thing you have to consider is when Cloud's going for these landing aerials, a lot of the time he's doing them very late, so he has to. Ooh, Ooh, excellent that was really coverage! Nice. Yes, he has to do. He has to commit to doing nothing for an extended period of time before he commits to that aerial late on your shield, and that gives you plenty of time to intercept. Mm -hmm. Oh my wow. God! Wow! There's C2 committing to absolutely nothing, waiting for maybe an air dodge uh, to punish with a nair. Mm -hmm. The hitbox from Luma to just pop you out. Karna not having any of it, aggressively getting back on stage. No, uh, he said, look, I'm probably dead right now, yeah. so why not fling that forwarder out, and if it hits, it hits, and it did. Yeah. Strongly ending game one with an exclamation mark. Mm -hmm. That's the way that I would have put it. Going now into game two on Town and City. Strong stage for both characters, but C2 definitely looking to try to actually seal out that stock. Once you seal out the stock in Smash 4, it's a lot easier to get that damage on the next one, but sometimes just taking that first stock is really difficult when you have that strong defensive play from Karma. And, when, really especially, and especially yeah. when you're playing a more defensively minded character like Rosalina, right? And you go up against a very defensive player, it's hard to think about your character in a different light than you would think. Where, okay, I've got to try to break a wall with Rosalina? How do I do this? Yeah. Here we go. Karna there not go. even paying any attention to C2, just goes after the Luma. And that's, and that's like the first time that we've seen C2 finally go after him for going after Luma like that. Wow, great job holding onto his jump to set up for a really nice uh, spaced Oof. down air. Catching him on the landing, barely getting the kill with that cross slash. 1% less would not have done it. Wow, Karna wow, that was uh, a great messed punish. up. Yeah, Karna had no reason to go off stage in that situation. C2 aptly getting the KO, as he should. Mm -hmm. Great pivot grab as well. Just punish that uh, preemptive down air. Not gonna get these day one attacks in, in today. Okay, landing nair good, although he's been, Karna's been using these nairs really close to C2, which I'm not a big fan of. Usually you wanna get just the very edge of the nair or get the very middle of the nair so that you can get it at the startup. No punish on the perfect shielded, really high back air actually. C2, though, still looking strong with this lead. Gets a pivot grab on the landing. 
putting on more strong damage. Tries to catch an air dodge again with the forward smash, but Karna this time getting aggressive. Not going to pick the same option twice. I really like the option there to go for the back air after he got that uh, up, because uh, going for an upper there would have given C2 more time to get Lumen back. Now, in that situation particularly, it didn't matter as much, but I really like the idea. Mm -hmm. Still present of mind. This is a real rough. Yeah, landing after C2 gets the springboard of that platform. That air dodge becomes a lot scarier. It becomes a situation where you have to actually commit to either air dodging or not. Coming down with an aggressive option. Uh, where normally you could just drift down where they don't have that much height. Yeah. All the way in a blast zone, I was going to do it. So, really uh, good retort. This is, this is best of five, by the way. Yeah. We didn't see a lot of aggressive punishes from C2 on Karna's empty landings, but what we did see was actually a lot of good spacing around it. There we go, we see some preemptive up there's I like this. But a Karna's lot of pivot grabs. Dodge, yeah. We've been seeing a lot of pivot grabs uh, in order to catch his down airs, in order to catch his neutral airs that he's doing really close. And there we go, see jabs, stuff out the up air. Don't let him get away with all these empty landings. Karnak to, gonna have to find a different game plan or adjust his game plan around this. C2's definitely made the uh, the adjustments that I feel like he needs to. Maybe we'll see we'll see how Karna does uh, in taking out the Luma. But yeah, it looks like Karna's opting to make up that percent that he has to make up because C2's gotten up such a strong start rather than going after the Luma just to establish a control over the game for 15 seconds. I'm gonna go, just going to try to space out with back air. Nair doesn't want to commit too hard to get rid of Luma. That's going to do it with the damage. Yeah, import importantly, that he was just using that Nair not to hit Rosa, but to get Luma. Mm -hmm. Excellent there he goes. Comes recovery. off the ledge with a down air. Interesting option, but it works out for him. Puts C2 in the air. He's going to have to land. Air dodges right through, though. Karna commits a little bit too hard with that up smash. Excellent wow. early execution on the climb hazard, and that will take the stock for him, indeed. Absolutely. Doesn't want to let his limit go uh, without any Oof. reward. I think, think Karna realized that second roll was pretty bad, so he said, <laughs> okay, I'm just going to maybe goof on you a little bit with the third yeah. one. Sometimes, honestly, it's hard to just punish the three rolls. Yeah. Because you're stuck scrambling for the second one. If you don't get that punish, then you kind of just put yourself in a bad spot. Uh, Great. Speaking of putting yourself in a bad spot, mm -hmm. C2... Uh, Using that star shot to get on stage, but then, I mean, Karna with the grab, knowing that that kick is just going to get Luma right out of there for the next seconds. Goes for the empty hop. Empty hop. Uh, landing up air there would have been terrifying for C2 to try to contest. Don't blame him. Without Luma there, didn't have very much to go, but even with when you're not going to get aggressive to try to deal with these, I feel like just rolling out of the situation might have been a little bit more helpful to at least position, make Karna work a little bit more for it. C2's been content to sit still in his shield, and that's terrifying. Because then you let Karna get all of his pressure for free. It's a very nice fake out by Karna to pretend to be going onto the stage to preserve the limit, and then going right to the ledge. That's that grab. Fair misses Luma. Just really unfortunate for Karna. Really wanted that damage to take okay. it out, but doesn't matter yeah, anyways. He's going to do it. That's tough. Yeah. He got a sweet spot that ledge, baby. Mm -hmm. That game, I would say, was lost because C2 missed the ledge twice with that uh, recovery. Yeah, the first one set up for a position where he had no Luma, had to deal with Karna on stage, put on a lot of damage. Second one, just free kill. When Cloud has limit, you cannot land on stage with a lag like that. No. No, 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 no. So Karna's up to one. One more game puts him in grants. Mm -hmm. See what C2's got up his sleeve. And he is the only one with sleeves. Right. He is the only one to pull out something from said sleeves. Connor's got short sleeves. If he pulled something out of it, I'd be impressed. Going back to Smashville here. Thinking stage, maybe not the biggest issue in the world. Probably not. I mean, I think mostly he just needed better Luma control in that last mm -hmm. game. Because uh, Karna got back to that, you know, just attacking Luma a whole lot. Right. And then not letting C2 get Luma back. Karna doing a great job catching the landing with a dash attack after C2 had expended all the options. But Karna expending his options there gives C2 a big opportunity. That's why we're seeing a mostly even game, but it is now tilted pretty heavily in Karna's favor. C2 using that Smashville platform, which is in just the right position to let him put all that time in to get Luma back. A lot of C2's movement is uh, 
I want to say it, it's not movement. He's very still in his play. Ooh, up smash. That was a great punish. Didn't yeah. even waste the limit there. He could have easily gotten the limit kill, and I maybe wouldn't have said anything about it. But Ooh, great card recognition. saved Luma. Oh, uh, like from watching our other local Ros Rosalinas like Mage, he uses movement a lot in order to uh, make that was a little bit more terrifying in order to make the uh, defensive play a little bit less easy to read. But Karn has been able to set up his pressure really well, adjusted his timing and uh, spacing around the idea that C2 is going for preemptive punishes or going for pivot grabs. And he's getting a lot. Okay, so I really like the idea to dash away and then get the dash attack on Luma mm -hmm. so that he's not in a position where he'll potentially miss mm -hmm. and sets up for the easy Luma kill. Right. Goes for the high recovery, Early but jump. C2 scopes it out, just jumps, commits to nothing, waits, and reacts. Great reaction by C2. Okay, punishes that nair, though. Normally covers a lot of space, but that dash attack gonna cleave right through it. Well, speaking of cleaving right through, Karnas cleaving right through the bracket in the grand finals. Winners he's side. able to take out C2. Karna looking real strong. 